All right, thanks everybody for being on. I don't know, it's choppy for me. I don't know if it's choppy for you all. If so, I'll take the blame for Saturday, but not on the choppy video feed. Uh, disappointing loss to Oklahoma State on Saturday. Too many mistakes to beat a quality opponent on the road. I think I was pretty clear about that after the game. There's a very small margin for error in this league and, and where we're at right now in this league, and we just made too many mistakes. I'll quickly recap and turn the page on this one. Uh, special teams, I'll go over the negatives first and then hit the positives. Missed opportunity on a kickoff on the fumble. Uh, hit us in the chest. We weren't able to recover it. Lost three points there when we dropped the snap on the field goal. And then we had, I thought we had three opportunities to flip the field with our punt unit, and we, just, we, we didn't hit great punts. Uh, the positives on special teams, I thought our kickoff coverage and our punt coverage units were really good. Um, and then we made all of our attempted kicks, which Evan had a really good week, so uh, that wasn't surprising. I was pr proud of him. Uh, defensively, it hit the negatives. Two we got the ball out twice and, and didn't, couldn't recover either one of them. Um, gave up 200-plus yards rushing. It's going to be tough to win when you do that. Um, and we were only 50% on third down. Um, the last drive took up seven minutes and 30 seconds. They converted four third downs. Um, that was that was a tough pill to swallow. Positives are we limited their explosive plays. They were uh, the most explosive offense in the country last year and, re and returned most of those pieces. We did do a good job of getting the ball out. We didn't recover it, but we got the ball out. Uh, I thought Tony Fields' interception was big. And then um, we did a much better job from week one, getting 11 hats to the football. Um, you know, some misfits and misassignments um, led to some of those big runs, as I, as I stated after the game. Uh, I thought these guys played well. Alonzo Adai, Tony Fields, uh, Darius, and Tyke Smith. I thought those guys uh, played at a high level in that football game. Offensively, um, hit the negatives first. 16 negative plays. Um, we had some critical penalties, uh, stalled in the – didn't really get down to the to red zone where we stalled one time, but really kind of in that fringe area. Uh, moved the ball real well um, up and down the field, um, but got stalled in the fringe area. We missed explosive plays. We got to be better. Uh, we got to be able to connect on those downfield plays. I think we were um, one or, or two – or one or zero of eight. I can't remember. Positives, we ran the ball effectively. Um, Letty went over 100 yards again. I thought he really, really played well. Um, at three of our four sp wideout spots, we we did we won our fair share of one-on-ones. Uh, didn't always look like it on, on TV, I'm sure, but we won some one-on-ones. And I already talked about it. We moved the ball well in the open field. Um, I thought these guys played well. Letty, I already talked about. Really good job after contact. Uh, Winston Wright, well over 100 yards, uh, huge play. I thought up front, Mike Brown and, and Chase Barrett played really well. Uh, probably Mike's best game, back-to-back -back games. He's played well, and Chase did a really nice job in his first game of the year. And then Michael Laughlin, I thought he did some nice things blocking at the tight end position. Um, kind of wrap up this game. Uh, we got to learn from it move on. It's uh, not the outcome we wanted. Thought that we had some opportunities to win the game, and we didn't do it. So we got to continue to get better. Um, not only players, coaches wise, we got to get better and learn from it, and move on. Kind of turn the page here to uh, to Baylor. It's uh, glad to be getting home. Um, kind of sad that we're not going to have fans. Glad that we are going to have fans for the for the Kansas game and, and moving ho moving forward. Uh, hopefully, opportunity to play on national television again. Chance of redemption on national television. I think we have the same crew. Um, Baylor was impressive in week one versus Kansas. Really uh, dominated that game. A lot of respect for Coach Aranda. I think one of the the top defensive minds in all of college football um, over a long period of time. Um, obviously coming off a national championship last year, and he's put together a great staff. Uh, two former head coaches as his coordinators. Um two really successful head coaches as coordinators. And I talked about this last year, is when you turn on Baylor's tape, they're a tough, 
a physical team that that runs very well. And you can tell that they have a really good culture there um, that Matt Rule uh, built and then Coach Rand and his staff can continue to maintain. Uh, kind of a preview here, special teams. Uh, their coordinator is Matt Pallage. We work together at – at Kentucky, he does a really nice job. He was at Lafayette the last two years and really helped them turn that uh, help Billy Napier turn that program around. Um, they have they have two or they had an explosive returner in Ebner who's a running back. Uh, he he took two kickoff returns for touchdowns last week. Very seldom do you see that in one game. That's that's impressive. Um, their specialists are good. Made a forty-seven yard field goal, and and across their coverage units, athletes that run really well. And like I said, they play extremely hard on special teams. And you can tell that's part of the culture that's ingrained there. Defensively, uh, Ron Roberts, their defense coordinator, really successful head coach. He was at Lafayette as well, helped, helped Billy uh, get that program going. I think they've won 10-plus games two years in a row there, and they're still undefeated. Uh, but really a, a sound defensive mind. They're aggressive, uh, played a lot of guys up front. And, and caused some problems for Kansas. Uh, their linebacker, uh, number two, um, the Bernard kid, he made about every play against us last year. He's, he, he really runs well. And then their, what they call their uh, star position, number eight, um, I thought he played really well in the, in the opener too. And they've got a, a group in the secondary that's played a lot of football, especially at corner. Uh, offensively, coordinators Larry Fedora, um, really successful head coach at Southern Miss and then at North Carolina. Um, a lot of respect for him. They play really fast. I think the O-line, uh, after one game, looked much improved. Um, uh, Charlie Brewer's a quarterback. He's a winner. Um, got asked about him yesterday. And and that's that's about as good a compliment as I can give. He's, he's a winner, and he's won at every level. Comes from a winning family. They got special talent at running back. And then they, they – really uh, can run on the outside. And and I expect them to come try to get those guys involved early in the game. So wrapping up here, and, I, and I'll take questions. Looking forward to this. Looking forward to the preparation this week. I think it's going to say a lot about of our team, how we prepare. We had a good day yesterday and work days on Tuesday and Wednesday. So with that, I'll, I'll take questions. First question today will be from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Neil, start with the bad in terms of penalties. Um, not something you guys had a lot last year. Your numbers weren't bad at all, but obviously a problem this Saturday. So is it something you harp on, or does that just exacerbate the problem, or, or how do you correct that area? Well, I didn't necessarily agree with all of them. Um, but the procedure penalties and the non-aggressive penalties, um, those got to be eliminated because they, they kill yourself. And then the selfish penalties, you know, Letty had one um, after the whistle had blown. We got to eliminate those. Um, the aggressive penalties, you you got to be careful with. Um, the holding penalties, there's going to be some of those. You just continue to stress technique. Um, but where we're at right now as a program, we cannot beat ourselves, whether that's turnovers, whether it's missed assignments, penalties, we can't do that. And so we've got we've got to get better at it. And really speaking, Greg, on those non-aggressive penalties. Coach, we have a question sent in from John Raby, and you mentioned it earlier, Ebner, their kick returner. Uh, after seeing what he did last week, how difficult is that to defend? Well, I mean, we're going to have to – our kickoff cover team, we think it's been a strength of ours here uh, for the last two years. Thought they did a really nice job last week. Uh, didn't do a very good job week one, and, and I'm sure they're – uh, licking their chops a little bit because Eastern Kentucky ran one back for a touchdown and got called back due to a penalty. Um, but it's a great challenge for us. And we've got several starters that run down on the kickoff, and it's a, our mentality is it's the first play of our defensive series. So he, he did a tremendous job, really kind of went against the grain, looked like he uh, kind of cut both of them back to the field. They had a boundary return called, and then he just he, – he's fast, fast and elusive. Next question will be from Cody Nesper. Go ahead, Cody. Hey, Neil. Um, you talked about Dave Aranda, but with him in the league now, that's five first- or second-year head coaches. And I was just wondering, with that many new coaches in the league, do you think there's a possibility that as you five continue to grow and develop your programs that we could really see the league change in the coming years? 
Well, I think the the league has already changed a great deal. Um, I think the defenses, and we've I think we've talked about this on in these press conferences uh, some in the past, but I think the defenses and the special teams play. This is still a really innovative league offensively, um, and it's a league in certain games you're going to have to score a lot of points to win. Um, but I think the defenses have have really innovated as well. And then special teams play has gotten significantly better, in my opinion. Um, and there's really good coaches here from top to bottom. Um, you look at what Dave's done throughout his career, defensive numbers that he's put up and um, in a really tough physical league in the SEC and the same in the Big Ten. Um, and so – and then Ron Roberts, you know, he's a guy that that probably um, not a lot of people maybe in our market know his name, but I can tell you in the coaching profession, extremely well thought of, um, extremely well thought of, especially in the southeast, head coach at Delta State in southeast Louisiana and did a, did a phenomenal job in really high – you know, he it doesn't get talked about, but he actually hired Coach Aranda as the defense coordinator there at Delta State and – uh, the AD we had at Troy um, came in, and he spoke very highly of both of those guys, Jeremy McLean. Coach, another question sent in to us, this one from Bob Herzl. Um, you know, you, you seem like the, the type of person that, that you don't take losses home with you. You know, how, how do you yep. manage that, and how does your family kind of support you after those moments, and, and then how important is it for, you know, a, a loss to not get to you? <laughs> nah, you know, Dax didn't miss any blocks. Uh, he didn't uh, – He didn't. Ainsley didn't make any bad play calls, so I'm not taking it home. Uh, my 12-year-old critiques everything. So, uh, so Adeline, she's got some good advice. Um, but, no, nah, you can't take them home. You know, it's uh, it's part of it. If you're in this business, you're going to lose some tough ones. That was a tough one. Uh, maybe as tough as we've had here, um, honestly. Um, but, no, nah, we don't take them home. Flip the page, move on. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's fair to your family if you take them home. Next question from Michael Sussman. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, now that you've had some time to watch the film and assess the play uh, of the offensive line, uh, how do you think they did as a unit and individually? Well, mixed bag. I thought at times, um, you know, in, in the interior three, we did some really nice things, uh, created some movement. Um, short yardage-wise, we were successful. Um, at tackle, we've got to get better. You know, a lot of those guys haven't played a lot of football. Uh, we got compressed, um, lost some one-on-ones. Um, and so I think it was a mixed bag. I do think we're improved from last year. Um, we got to do a better job uh, staff-wise, myself mainly, not putting our quarterback in a position to get hit. He's got to do a better job getting rid of the ball and, and, and throwing the ball from the location in the pocket he's supposed to, um, which he'll get corrected. Next up is Kevin Kinder. Go ahead, Kevin. Coach, you mentioned correcting some of the mistakes, and obviously there's an on-field component to that. Could you tell us, especially for some of the mental aspects, how you correct those off the field, like your discussions with assistants, then them in the uh, meeting room with their position players? How does that work through the week? Yeah, so basically what we do is, as a staff, we watch the game. If it's an away game, we got time on the way home, so we watch it then, and then – you may have a minute to kind of give them a pointer as we get off the plane. Uh, most of the time, uh, we'll put the comments in in our computer system, and they're able to see them on Sunday. We don't, we can't meet with them, but they're able to see it on Sunday. And then we watch the game with them on Monday mornings and go over uh, the positives and the negatives. And, you know, the learning point for this team-wise, individual players are, you know, why the details matter, how small the margin is between winning and losing, um, because that game was winnable, um, and there were there were w- winning plays that we could have made that could have changed the outcome, and we just didn't we didn't make them. And so uh, you got to learn from those things. Um, and then you know sometimes on defense trying to do too much, you know where you got to control your gap. If you get out of your gra- gap and you don't do your one eleventh, then that's how that's how runs scored out. And so that's that's kind of what happened, and then and then offensively, a lot of it is just technique, technique issues. 
um, not using the correct footwork up front, um, trying to speed through our releases at wide out when we got pressed. Um, and some of they're just better than better better than us at certain positions too. I mean, um, and that that's that's part of it. We got to we got to figure out a way as a staff to to overcome some of those things. So I think there's plenty of blame to go around. You learn from it. You own your mistakes. You hold each other accountable, and then you go back to work and and get it fixed and have a better plan and play better the next game. Next question is from Chris Anderson. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, how did you guys come out of the game as far as health-wise? I saw a couple guys have to go to the sideline, get worked out, uh, and may not have come back in during the game. Yeah, um, first of all, I thought uh, from a physical conditioning-wise, I thought we really did a nice job. Offensively, you know, we were on the field 90-plus snaps. Um, and I thought our guys did a – you know, especially our big guys did a nice job of – I don't think fatigue was a was a factor in the game, so I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, from an injury standpoint, uh, Van Darius would be the one that's questionable. You know, he had the sack there and, and got hurt on the sack. He'd, he'd be questionable going into into the, the game on Saturday. Everybody else, uh, I think we came out rel relatively healthy. Next question is from Ryan Pritt. Go ahead, Ryan. Hey, Neil, you, you talked a little bit even yesterday about Jarrett's performance and his toughness, obviously, that he had to display on Saturday. Um, I was wondering what your evaluation of his decision-making was, especially in RPO situations. And I was going to ask how much of, of those decisions, those RPO plays, are on his plate right now? I don't know what the percentage. Um, it was exactly um, – we, we had a good number, I would say, in that, you know, probably – 15-ish range on Saturday were RPOs. Um, he missed a couple throws. Those are footwork. Um, he got his feet tangled up. And really what it came down to, he's trying to rush, trying to throw the ball before the running back had cleared and he got his feet tangled up. We missed two. That would have been big plays. Um, he had a couple where he didn't have his eyes in the right spot. Um, but you're never going to be perfect on those. You know, I mean, honestly, there's a lot that goes into it. Some of it's post-snap, and so those are really bang-bang plays that you're not going to be perfect on. Um, but we do. We run a run a good bit of them. We'll continue to run a good bit of them. Um, you know, decision-making overall um, was he can be better. I don't think it was poor, um, but he can definitely be better. Next question is from Chuck Landon. Go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, that's, that's Chuck's muted right there on the screen. Chuck, you can unmute. There you go. All right, just move on. We'll go to John Antonic. Go ahead, John. I'm doing some, uh, I was doing some quick research here while you were talking, and it um, looks like the vast majority of their experience is uh, up, up front on the offensive line. Ran for 200 yards against um, Kansas. Um, is there a concern there that they're going to try to possess the ball and try to try to reduce the game a little bit with with with, with what they've got? Well, I think they want to run the football. Um, that's you know, Coach Fedor has always uh, ran the football, played with tempo, um, and they'll throw it too. But you know, with the talent they have at running back, you know. People try to get their best players the ball, and, and those running backs are special. So we do anticipate them coming in and establishing the run. Um, the O-line is better, for sure. I thought they played. Um, that's the thing that stuck out to me watching the game, just watching uh, Baylor over the summer and then watching them their first football game here is their O-line's much improved. A Brewer, a running quarterback, too, that's a, a concern, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, he makes plays with his feet. He does. He extends plays. They'll run him a little bit uh, where he really hurts you is on pass, on call pass plays when he scrambles and breaks the pocket. We'll go to Mike Kazaza. Go ahead, Mike. Neil, how are you? Good, Mike. How are you? I, I, I have two for you. Um, your defense, I think, probably wanted to do more to affect their offensive line and the quarterback, but I'm not sure if that was where you wanted it to, but I'm also not sure it could have gotten there because of 
how they called it and how quick the quarterback took care of things. Um, I don't know how, how you interpret that. And then uh, the second one, you said nobody yesterday wants your opinion on the rules thing about the stats for quarterbacks rushing yeah. and passing. Uh, I'd like to hear your opinion on that. All right, so I'll talk first of all about the uh, – um, schematically what we were trying to do against Oklahoma State, we play a little bit of a light box um, to try to take away the explosive plays, especially Tylen Wallace. Um, really run. We knew they were trying to get him the ball. We had a good feel for where he would be at, so we tried to play some coverage to take him. Um, we knew we'd, he'd get some catches, but we were trying to take the shot plays um, out. So we played a little bit um, – probably a, a gap down sometimes in the box against them. Um, but where we got in trouble is is our fitters were late a couple times, and then on at least four occasions we got out of our gap and gave up. You know, one of them was the touchdown, uh, the long touchdown, and then three other plus ten runs because of that. But that was the – we played a lot of three-man front against them. Um, we, we slanted – slanted some we're still trying to you know we've only had tony fields and he's really talented we've only had him for a short amount of time we're trying to figure out exactly what's the best way that he likes to see the game you know and so we're a little bit of work in progress there as far as the rules there's i got i got as far as stats go is i got two things that i think that you know and i don't even know who you complain to on this but um so the first one is what you're talking about and it's it's lost yards, you know, rushing, okay? And they what they do is they deduct your sacks from your rushing yards, which to me, it's a pass play. So it should be sack yardage. It should be a separate stat. They should come off your total offense yards, but not necessarily your rushing yards because it's misleading. Um, it's no different if it's a pass play and the quarterback takes it off and runs on a pass play and it's behind, and he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. You know what they call that? A sack. Even though it's really, you know, you know what I mean. Like it comes off. It doesn't. But anyway, so in my opinion, all right, you run the football for 131 yards. I think is what we ran it for. The sack yardage couldn't come, shouldn't come out. If you have a, if a, you have a run play and you get tackled for minus two, that's a tackle for a loss. That comes off your rushing yards. Um, my other pet peeve statistically is. A ball's completed, all right, or it's a really good throw. Let's say the ball's caught, tipped up, defender catches it, all right, or it's a ball that goes right through an eligible receiver's hands into a defensive backs. In my opinion, that should be uh, something other than an interception that goes on the quarterback stats because that ball – that interception wasn't necessarily his fault, so it shouldn't show up in his individual stats. So that's that's my thoughts on on two of the stats. Have time for two more questions here. We'll go to Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. Coach, personnel question on guys who didn't play. Sam Brown, I don't think got any snaps Saturday, and then Sean Martin. I know you said he was contact trace the first game, but so, I don't know if he made the trip. So Sean Sean right. Martin did make did not make the trip. Uh, yesterday was his first practice back. He got cleared on Friday. Uh, came out of contact tracing. Um, excuse me, on Friday. So he's back and um, getting back in the mix this week. And then um, Sam Brown uh, was just was just coach's decision. And Chuck, we'll go back to you to try it again. All right. Hey, Neely, I'll, during the post game, you were all – how do you fix that? I didn't hear the question, Chuck. I'm sorry, you broke up. Uh, how do you fix the four fumble problem? How do you fix that, that you didn't recover any? <laughs> well, the, the the one on kickoff, you can practice because we got to it. We were the first ones to get to it. I mean, it hit off our chest. So, we work that. Um, we do a takeaway circuit every single day we practice, and we work that. So, the other two we never we didn't get to. You know, they, they were on the ground, and, and I, their offensive linemen – it was right at their feet, and they fell on both of them. So there's not much you can do. I believe if you if you strain, and I think if you continue to do the right things over and over, that ball will bounce your way a little bit. And so I think that's what we got to do. We got to we got to strain and prepare better. And if we do those things, and I think that ball will bounce to us.